So now that we've talked about all the different layers within the OSI model, I want to take it a step further and introduce encapsulation and decapsulation and show you what types of headers and trailers get added on and as well as stripped off of various pieces of data as they move up and down the OSI model. So in this very simple example, we're going to assume that these are two directly connected computers and they're just connected with an ethernet cable. We'll just say that they're connected with a crossover cable down here depicted in this light yellowish color. So as we know, these top three layers occur at the host and we simply just call them data. But once we get down to the transport layer, then we start breaking them up into segments. So what happens if we assume this system over here is sending some information over to this system over here, when it gets down to the transport layer, all that data is broken up into segments and each segment gets a segment header, which is either gonna be a TCP or a UDP header. Then as it continues down the OSI model, it gets down to the network layer. Then we add on our packet information. So specifically, our packet header, lots of information gets added, but most importantly, the source and the destination IP address gets added right there. Then it continues to move down and we get to the data link layer, and then we add on our frame header and a frame trailer. Now again, there's a lot of information that gets added here, but most importantly, the source and the destination MAC address. And then it goes down to the physical layer and that's where it's actually sent across the wire in those electrical signals as the bits, the ones and the zeros. Then once it gets over here to the source on the other end of the cable, all this information gets stripped off as it goes up the OSI model. So the data link layer, it's gonna take a look at that, strip that off, it's gonna strip off the packet header, it's gonna strip off the segment header, and then it's going to reassemble everything into data at the upper layers. So that's a very simplified view of data encapsulation. Encapsulation is when we add on all this information and decapsulation is when we reach the source and it strips off all this information that it no longer needs to the point where we just have the data that's in a format that we can read and we can see and we can use at the application layer. So now let's take a look at a more detailed view where we're actually traversing one network to another network and we're traversing switches and routers. So with this diagram, what we have is we have a PC that is on one network that wants to request a web page from a web server that's on a different network. And they're both directly connected via a router and they both have a switch. So this PC is connected to a switch that is connected to the router that is connected to this other network via a switch to the web server. So we're gonna talk at a very high level of how data encapsulation and decapsulation occurs within the OSI model. Now I want you to understand that this is very high level and it's conceptual, but it gives you an idea of what these different devices look at and at what level they look at within the OSI model. So let's assume that we're on this PC, we open up a web browser, we wanna request a web page from this web server. So we start at the application layer with our web browser. We go all the way down to the physical layer. So we're adding on all of these headers. So we add on the transport header, we add on our packet header, we add on our frame header, and then it goes down to our actual network wire itself, the cable that connects to the switch. When it gets to the switch, it's gonna go up to the data link layer because that is the layer that switches operate on. They look at the MAC address header that's on here, so they look at the source and the destination MAC addresses in that header, and they determine where to send it, and they know it needs to go to this router. So it goes back down the OSI model, down to the physical layer again on the cable and then up to the router and then on the router it's going to go up to the network layer so this is where our ip addresses are the source and the destination ip address the router is going to look at those and it's going to know where to send it because it's a directly connected route it's going to go back down the osi model down to the physical layer and then over to this switch and then back up to the data link layer where again it's going to look at the source and the destination mac address in that header, that MAC address, or simply the frame header. And it's gonna know that it needs to send it out the port to which the web server is connected, send it back down to the wire, and then all the way up to the web server, decapsulating all of this information to the point where it's just the data. And then the web server is gonna look at it and it's gonna do this whole process all over again back to the PC. 
So that's a very high level overview of how this works in regards to data encapsulation and decapsulation, not only with directly connected computers, but also when we're adding things in like switches and routers. So that's going to conclude this video. I just wanted to help visualize this process a bit more with data encapsulation and decapsulation with the OSI model. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.